filling in for Tom O'Brien. I'll actually be with you until uh, next Monday. Should be a good thing. First things first, I want to talk about. Um, we are now on a bunch of different social media platforms. Uh, give us a follow out there if you're on YouTube. Make sure to like and subscribe. That really helps us out. We are on Instagram as TFNN Corp. And we're on TikTok as well for all you young guys out there. Um, and that is going to be uh, Tiger Financial on TikTok. Having a great time with all those things. We've gotten a bunch of new people uh, coming in through those avenues. And so uh, welcome if you're uh, new. So anyways, let's take a look what we got going on right now. Of course, we've kind of had a little bit of a consolidation period and then really to the downside of the past uh, few days. So right now we're in the E-mini trading off about 0.38%, 52.63. That is off from a high of 53.68. Uh, now, something that I will note that is a little bit positive with all these, and we can look in, for instance, let's take, check out the Dow, right? You have some decreasing volume. In the Dow, it's not as stark as it will be in the E-mini. And the NQs, you see something as well, right? So you have this kind of consolidation period, and then we've been pulling back maybe the past, you know, like six sessions or something like that. Um, but this is all in decreasing volume, which is, which is positive. Right, we take a look at the NQs right now at 18,661. The Dow futures at 38,248. Of course, we hit that 40,000 mark and just kind of gave it up from there. And that was going up on shorter volume as well. We have the gold contract at 2,340, silver at 3,137. Copper continues to be down, right? This is kind of sad. Uh, we were trading at just under 520 right now. We're at $4.65. Uh, crude oil, uh, honestly maintaining that kind of lower bound. Now, we are up at 78 when the past few times I've been on. We've been down near the 75, high 75, low 76 area. Uh, but still today, we are off about one5 percent in it tesla up about 1.73 uh then steel dynamics you know that's been doing a massive consolidation thing on pretty low volume again that kind of suggests that it wants to move to the downside but it has done this before many times and has gone right back up to it and formed a new trading range now we're talking about how we had this consolidation period in the past few sessions you had some downward movement in it this is corresponding as well with the dollar trading back up in a higher range, up above that 105 level. Uh, however, we are down to about 104.72 right now. Um, so it seems like we're going to stay in this, again, this kind of consolidation area with the dollar. If it gets back up above that 105 trading range, uh, you know, that can send uh, the market down. Obviously, NVIDIA blew up. I'm just trying to think of things that have happened since the last time I've been on. The NVIDIA thing was wild. Uh, you know, you're supposed to... <laughs> The shares are supposed to be less when you go through a split, and they're higher than they were prior. 1,129. It's something like a, uh, can I get, yeah, 2.7 trillion market cap. So that's the third, it makes us now the third largest company behind Apple and then Microsoft in first place. Um, amazing. So, you know, how does it look? How do we look at this, right? Okay, well, first we have Tim Ort on today. This is going to be really awesome. Uh, get his analysis of what we're looking long-term. I know a lot of people are very bullish, and I think that makes sense. I think there's still a lot of money in the market. Um, we haven't seen such a large liquidity suck um, as maybe anticipated through higher interest rates. And, in fact, you're seeing some weird things as well where, you know, one, obviously equities are going up, and so people can profit off that, but also the investments of uh, people with, with more uh, liquid cash, essentially, um, excuse me, more assets, uh, they're getting more money uh, from these high interest rates. So the question kind of becomes, you know, first, okay, let's take a look at this is what I, what, what I really want to like move into is the beige book, right? So what I'm trying to say is you have potential for this really bullish movement continue to go on, but the economic situation is not as good as it could be. I, I think that we're moving away from this idea that we're going to have lower interest rates and we're now just kind of going as like well we have this money let's continue to invest it we're making more money off of current investments and that can be you know really in like assets like land and real estate um and so you're getting this kind of you know I, 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 as i keep talking like this like two different economies going on right where people who aren't making as much money are getting really hammered by some of this stuff but people who have enough are doing okay and i think this is moving the market up and we're losing talk about uh, you know any kind of interest rate cuts that were fueling these all-time highs, but we're not really pulling back in any major way from it, which is why I can kind of say that this is almost like a consolidation. 
especially on the lower interest. The beige book came out. This is basically kind of a uh, summary of the 12 financial districts of the Federal Reserve. I want to take a look here. And this can kind of give you a synopsis too, because again, what we've been talking about is, you know, when do we see these rate cuts come down, right? They're trying to hit a 2% target. And that, but what's important to know is that it's over time. It doesn't mean we hit some low number, like low CPI for the month. And then, okay, all of a sudden we're lowering interest rates. That would be a very grave misstep because then you can go and, and really fire back inflation up um, since capital is cheaper when you lower the interest rates. So let's take a look at the overall economic activity. Uh, the national economic activity continued to expand. Okay, we're looking for um, not really a retraction, but kind of a stabilization. But this is just a slight expansion uh, from early April to mid-May. However, conditions varied across industries and districts. Most districts supported slight or modest growth, while two noted no change in activity. Retail spending was flat to up slightly, reflecting lower discretionary spending and heightened price sensitivity among consumers. That is notable in lower income earners, right? They're pulling back the discretionary spending. There is an article, I can pull it up, uh, but the factor was if you make over $100,000 a year, you feel rosier about the situations right now. If you're making below that, it, it's a little bit of a struggle. So auto sales are roughly flat, uh, with a few districts noting that manufacturers were offering incentives to spur sales, okay? Traveling into, and again, this is kind of what you want to see, this decrease in economic activity. And over a longer period of time, this is when we can start, you know, discussing actual uh, time frames for lower interest rates. Still, as I'm saying, the market, at least, looks like it's doing okay even without those lower interest rates. Let's keep going. Travel and tourism strengthened across much of the country, boosted by increased leisure and business travel, but hospitality contacts were mixed in their outlooks for the summer season. Demand for non-financial services rose, and activity in transportation services was mixed as port and rail activity increased, whereas reports of trucking and freight demand varied. Nonprofits and community organizations cited continued solid demand for their services, and manufacturing activity was widely characterized as flat to up, though two districts cited declines. So we do have some stabilization. We have some decline. But overall, we're still seeing a modest expansion. You know, for interest rates, that's not uh, telling me that this happens immediately. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.